What's going to be discussed is the physical change rate of the universe. How fast the brain works is irrelevant because we're talking about the universe in which the brain exists. The fact that the brain perceives light's travel speed as basically instantaneous shows that the kind of rate of change we're dealing with here is way, way, way above and beyond the brain's ability to recognize or even fully comprehend. This is because we are talking about the temporal building blocks of the reality that creates the brain to perceive and comprehend any speed or change rate at all. This has to be stated first and foremost, because when people see the term Planck in consciousness, they assume that the video will say nonsense about how the brain produces a reality perception. Since the word Planck is used in quantum mechanics, and the word consciousness is often used in metaphysics, a lot of scientifically minded people get so pissed off, they jump the gun and don't get to the part where this is explained. So it's been explained now. Planck state phenomena are what compose your linear experience of time. Technically, time is empirically nonlinear insofar that you can only experience one changing moment. But this one nonlinear momentary time volume is structured in a way that paradoxically allows for the real experience of illusionary multiple moments, and thus real linearity. Just how a movie is fake and is light bouncing off a screen, your experience of it is still real. This is an example of the real illusion paradox, which is explained in another video. There is one moment, but the multidimensional stuffing, aka the universe, that exists within the one moment changes, and that change generates the effect of multiple moments. Another way to say this is that reality is timeless, but the phenomena within your reality require time to be observed. Time, in this context, is an effect of how you observe the behavior of the phenomena within your reality. It's an effect of how you observe, which is why time can seem to fly or seem to drag. The experience of time can be defined in many ways, and the concept of Planck state phenomena is just one more way of describing the immediate continuity hallucination that is the ever-changing physical universe. The overall concept of Planck state phenomena relates strongly to the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Planck state phenomena are the building blocks of one's physical experience of linear time. Because your experience of the physical world has quantifiable properties involving matter and energy, time itself also falls into that category as to what can be quantified. This is because time, matter, and energy are basically one thing with different aspects, and thus the behavior of one aspect defines the other. One way of quantifying time is by taking the properties of the physical phenomena themselves that make up time experience and measuring some of those basic properties in a way that can be used to symbolically define a natural relationship between them. Relative to time, this relationship symbol is the Planck time equation. A great paradox in all this is that it essentially takes time to make time. Because there is only one momentary volume to have reality experience in, it takes what is called a Planck time for consciousness to self-reflect upon itself long enough to perceive change in physical normal matter and energy. It takes a Planck time to perpetuate the physical illusion of linearity. Now 
Now just to be clear, because words have different meanings, reality is a general term for what consciousness experiences being self-aware. In this context, Planck time isn't the actual time for reality to change, because reality is timeless. Planck time is a kind of fill-in for explaining the physical realness of the fact that reality creates a linear illusion. It's defining the realness of the linear illusion. Planck time is measuring the behavior of stuff inside reality, not the background reality itself. In another context, however, you could logically say it's the time it takes reality to change, implying the term reality involves a perception of matter and energy. Planck time is a natural unit of measurement made from the actual physical properties of your physical reality, such as light, gravity, etc. The term Planck state phenomenon means just that. A person, place, or thing that exists for a Planck time's worth of experience before transforming into another Planck state phenomenon. It's a way of quantifying and even quantizing the time variable of how the physical universe changes linearly. What this means is that what appears to be the universe changing every moment is in fact a gigantic number of Planck state universes being observed serially like a flipbook. It takes one Planck time for the universe page to flip. This linear experience also begets what could be called a timeline, which is a set of relevant Planck state phenomena. One second of experience in the world around you is a timeline of billions upon trillions of Planck state universes. To expand the concept of timelines from a linear to planar phenomenon, we must introduce space lines and force points. This is a fuller rendition of the concept of linear time, because you can't experience time without space, and you can't experience space-time without various expressions of attraction and repulsion. Space lines are the alternate versions of what could be taking place on a timeline. It is literally a line of different spaces in the same reference variable of time, just how a timeline is a line of different times in the same reference of space. What is meant by the same reference of space is that it's a defined space that holds its own linear continuity of one specific location changing in time. The word timeline is a general term for a distinct period of linear change. Space lines amount to the sensation of free will, wherein you have different choices to choose from in going down a certain path. Your experience of timelines complements space lines by amounting to the sensation of there being any linear path to go down at all. You can only fully experience one timeline and the other timelines hold the information of possible choices, like space lines do. The concept of force points are the Planck state phenomena themselves. The various Planck state universes that make up a timeline are literally expressions of force. It is force that is sculpting and molding the various shapes and colors of energetic and atomic patterns, forming that specific configuration of materiality. The term point is being used because a series of points creates a line just how a series of lines creates a plane. Multiple expressions of force creates a linear experience of time, all the while other possible expressions also exist. The human perspective is more like this, wherein you don't know what will happen next. You really don't. Told ya. The reality changes too fast for you to predict such a small time frame because your brain requires time to process what's happening. You're literally in a constant state of realization and that realization process takes time to occur. Relative to the human perspective, the brain is a physical expression in time and behaves as an anchor point of focus for your consciousness and mind. 
Your brain is a part of the physical universe, and as such, exists from moment to moment, Planck State Universe to Planck State Universe. All the other versions of itself in other timelines and space lines are largely not experienceable physically, but can be mentally. That's how all the timelines and such relate to you physically, by only being perceivable mentally. The mind can perceive and access all types of information, but the mind has yet to be expounded fully scientifically around the world yet, so the terminology for these mental experiences is extremely limited. Past phenomena of your timeline relate to your memory, future phenomena of your timeline relate to your imagination, and other timelines also relate to imagination. Before, when it was said that timelines and space lines are largely not experienceable physically, what that means is that the brain is an interdimensional device, and although you can only perceive the other phenomena in space-time mentally, that information still relates to a physical brain state. The brain is constantly anchoring information of other timelines and space lines, literally information of other dimensions of time, into its now experience through the mind. state phenomena exist at once within your consciousness. As a human, your brain can only perceive what is reflective of your brain state. Because the brain is functioning as an anchored focus of your multidimensional consciousness, the brain must function interdimensionally to translate that observed portion of experience being focused upon within your consciousness. This act of creating an interdimensional junction of various types of sensorial information of timelines and space lines, such as visions and music stuck in your head, is what imagination and memory is. Imagination, as well as memory, can also be contrived fantasy, but it's not only that. A large spectrum of real, actual experiences are all lumped under the term imagination and memory, as was stated before. The terminology for what is being talked about is limited, and can be somewhat misleading. Some may have to train themselves, and some can do this naturally. In altered states, such as fully in or slightly out of sleep, you can perceive glimpses of possible reality experiences further down the timeline of your life, and even see other possible timelines. When people realize they've physically experienced a mental memory of their future, it's called deja vu. Unfortunately, this doesn't work well for winning the lotto, because there are too many possible combinations to see, with too many dependent variables. It isn't mandatory to be asleep or even have your eyes closed to be in this state of possible future visioning. Most people enter the state more easily with closed eyes or have to fully asleep because there is less interruptive stimuli to break your mental connections focus. People can do this consciously by simply having emotional visions of goals you'd like to accomplish. Not emotive visions, emotional. The feeling goes with the vision in this specific event. Also. Deja vu doesn't have to be life-changing, super unique, turning the page to a new chapter of your life perceptions. They can be mundane and relatively useless. The original mental sight takes place in a similar spot as physical sight relative to the brain, allowing for an almost exact replica experience because you see physically with mainly your brain and eyes. This interdimensional information retrieval that is memory and imagination 
is as equal an expression of exploring within one's consciousness as physical worldly perceptions. Thus, it can have a similar projected outwards or surrounding you kind of quality. The spot mentioned is not in reference to a specific physical location in the brain, although that is somewhat relevant. It's more of a locational process wherein a focus of consciousness experiences location, life event, and environment in the same timeless place. It's like the unmoving here now's relationship to the space-time illusion. Remember, this isn't saying everything you think of holds physical relevance to your life. You can think, imagine, and envision all sorts of fantasy just as easily as you can recall and hear your favorite song in your head, perfectly, clearly, viscerally, with logical continuity. Now with all that said, to put all this information into proper perspective, it is crucial to remember that time is an illusion. Empirically, you only experience one ever-changing moment, but that doesn't negate the absolute fact that your experience of the illusion is real. The experience is real because you are. This is all a fancy way of labeling and describing how you naturally experience yourself as a multidimensional consciousness. You are the universe.